Mob Enforcer is one of the worst things ever made by another human being. I first became aware of this game probably a few years ago now when people in my comments section started telling me to check it out. And I took one look at the screenshots and knew what kind of game it was right away. Mob Enforcer, or Chicago Enforcer, as it was later known on the Xbox, is a first-person shooter developed by Touchdown Entertainment, and never has the name of a developer been so inappropriate either. Anyway, it was originally released for Microsoft Windows back in 2004. At a time when so many good first-person shooters were coming out, I had what could only be described as a 365-day erection. Running on the Jupiter engine is about all it's got going for it, considering otherwise it's really not all that remarkable, and made by a development team that don't even have their own Wikipedia page. Huh, <laughs> what a bunch of losers. I feel bad though knowing that there's probably some poor kid out there who bought this or had it given to them as a present, without anyone realising what kind of mess they were getting into. It's almost worth checking out though just for how bad it really is, but don't let that make you overlook the fact that playing this game is akin to covering your gonads in syrup, and crawling through a fire ant's nest. Well, let's slather those gonads up anyway and get crawling, because playing it is exactly what I've gone and done. <laughs> now, a few things worth mentioning about Mob Enforcer before we get into it. First off, this thing runs like absolute shit. I never had issues running No One Lives Forever 2, which is another game that uses the same engine, but for some reason, this thing just runs like crap. There's constant stuttering with the frame rate and some weird mouse input issues that causes aiming to feel really wonky. And I've tried so many things to fix this. I've changed my mouse's DPI settings. I've tried VSync on and off. I've tried forcing 60 or 30 frames per second. I even tried a patch to update my registry that's supposed to fix mouse acceleration issues with Windows 7, but none of that stuff worked. Outside of that though, you'll see it's a game that just shows a complete lack of effort. Anyone who's played No One Lives Forever 2 is going to remember that that game had an upgrade system, and as you completed main and side objectives, you'd earn points that you can spend on upgrading your health, armor, ammo, and so forth. Now, Mob Enforcer still uses that same system, but without the option to upgrade it, and it starts you off with the lowest possible rankings for all of these. What this means is you're always struggling for ammo, but most importantly, you're always scrounging for health and armor, and as a result, you're going to die a whole heap. <sighs> And then there's the shooting. Now, when people talk about NOLF 2, no one's gonna look back on it and say how amazing its shooting was. It was amazing for its writing and comedy. It was amazing for its level design and the way it gave you a bunch of fun little gadgets and let you choose how you get through an area to complete your mission. It had so much character and personality and the way you globetrotted from mission to mission made it seem varied and interesting. One mission you're driving a ski mobile in Siberia, the next you're in the streets of India throwing bananas at police officers. And even though the shooting mechanics were a bit wonky and not all that great, it was acceptable because it didn't happen all that often. In Mob Enforcer, you're pretty much always in combat. It seems every level you're getting attacked by half a dozen guys at once. And you'll quickly see how shitty the shooting mechanics are after you've been melted for the 20th time by that group of Tommy gun wielding mobsters that often spawn out of nowhere. The whole thing reminds me of that one Chicago level from Time Splitters 2, but in that game it was ironically cheesy and cliché. Here with Mob Enforcer, I get the vibe they were trying to do it unironically, and that's a bad thing. Just give them a bit of Chicago lightning. We'll Everyone's got these horrible accents that sound like they're doing their worst Italian-American impersonation, or like some kind of watered-down, uninspired Andrew Dice Clay. Hickory dickory duck, Mob Enforcer can suck my c- all in all, there's only 10 levels, but these will each leave lingering thoughts in your mind, like a public toilet leaves a lingering scent after it's been visited by a hungover construction worker. Then what am I supposed to do? Right, so in Mob Enforce, you're playing as Jimmy the Machine Gun Demora, and it starts off with Jimmy having to prove himself the Al Capone. Don't ever forget that. To do this, you've got to hunt down a squealer by the name of Needles Gennaro, but to find where Needles is hiding, you've got to find and rough up a guy named Mitz, a two-bit hustler with an infinity for dames and gin joints. The first thing I noticed about the game was that walking down the street with a weapon equipped makes the cops shoot at you, which I actually thought was kind of neat. Like, maybe this isn't going to be a run-of-the-mill shooter. So I started again with my weapon holstered, and immediately I got ambushed by a few enemies. I thought I'd run back to the cop to see if he'd deal with them, but as you can see, he couldn't care less. Until I pulled my gun out, of course, and then he arrested me. That was about the most exciting thing that happened, because overall this whole first level is pretty boring. You just run around this giant city block, getting ambushed by the same looking enemies over and over. Till you find the entrance to this speakeasy, but to get in, you need the password. 
So I run to the other side of the goddamn level to find it, getting killed by another cop because I forgot to holster my weapon. Before getting into the speakeasy where I find that Needles is hiding in the ironically named Lucky Motel. At this point the game introduces enemies with shotguns, which is good because the shotgun is vastly better than the pistol. Oh and I love to how it's literally the exact same weapon model from No One Lives Forever 2, like they didn't even bother to try to reskin them. Anyway, the second level is all about getting to Needles' room. You do this by navigating the same looking three floors of the hotel, where enemies keep spawning in like clockwork and rushing your position. If these guys aren't completely brain dead, they're able to gun you down like they're fucking John Wick or something. After a bit of a detour where they make you go all the way back to the bottom floor, I finally get into Needles' room and I get to kill him. Hey Needles, get a load of this enforcer! Hey Needles, why don't you come over here and lick my balls and tickle my asshole? Hey Needles, I got something for you. It's my balls in your mouth. Now we're finally in Capone's good graces. This time he wants me to head to the west side and deal with a bunch of bootlegging operations run by the Chenzo brothers. This level is actually kind of fun though and a pretty neat idea. So here you're moving around another city area, finding five stores that you need to destroy. And as you're looking for these stores, you're avoiding the cops and killing the same six or so mobsters that seem to keep respawning in constantly to attack you. It's a combination of guys with pistols, shotguns, and tommy guns, and you start to see really quickly how one-sided the combat can be. Best strategy, I think, is to camp in the stores and just funnel them through the one door. At this point, we've pretty much got 90% of the weapons too. Yeah, there ain't a whole lot of guns to use in Mob Enforcer. The Tommy gun is easily one of the better weapons, only because it has a 100 round drum magazine and it does decent enough damage. After messing up the storefront, you then have to sneak into the nearby brewery to find the Chenzo brothers, and this is where it starts to get real. Because the brewery is a goddamn slaughterhouse, where bad guys spawn in front and behind you incessantly. Expect to get blindsided a whole heap here and be ready to make liberal use of that quick save button because you're gonna need it. Once you finally reach the end of the brewery, you take on the Chenzo brothers, who are apparently twins, because it's the same character model just used twice. And these guys can soak up bullets like nobody's business. At this point I unlocked a Browning automatic rifle as well, which should have been a good thing. But for some reason this thing has a 3 round burst, which instantly removes any chance this game might have had of redeeming itself. Also it's the most stock looking weapon model I've ever seen. After that you've then got to blow up the brewery, which lazily is just the exact same level as before but played backwards. And this is done by planting 5 bundles of dynamite throughout the joint as you try to make your escape, with mobsters spawning in expectedly at the same time. Unfortunately, the feds are here too, and you end up getting caught and locked in the slammer. But no chill bitch cell's gonna hold the more, see? For some reason, the tunnels underneath this place are a goddamn death trap. Someone really needs to get down there and do some maintenance work on these pipes. Why don't you come over here and clean these pipes? Once you reach the street, you've got to avoid the cops and reach a nearby safe house, which is simple enough, simply because for once, you're not getting ambushed every two seconds. Then the next level is probably the most annoying one in the entire game. Now, what you need to do sounds easy enough on paper. You gotta pick up a bag of cash from a nearby dumpster to bribe the chief of police, and then also get a police uniform from a laundry to sneak into the precinct without being detected. But as you're searching the streets, you're constantly getting attacked by easily a couple of dozen bad guys at once, and they are relentless. Like the earlier level two, cops are completely oblivious to enemies attacking you, and they won't do a goddamn thing. Like this guy, look at him. The problem too is that the enemies seem to spawn in at complete random and often completely out of thin air, frequently behind you. Also too, it's the same city recycled from the first level, like how lazy. This whole level made me rethink my life choices and if playing this game was really worth it. And I'd have to be some kind of idiot to keep playing the game at this point, you know what I mean? Eventually I got through it and found the police station. And after bribing the chief, you then have to sneak into the cells to kill some guy named Lucero, who Capone is worried is going to turn informant. Again like finishing off Needles in the first job, he just stands there and accepts his fate. He probably wants to be erased from the game and I don't blame him. After this you're back to wrecking storefronts for Capone, another 5 just like last time. Though now the goal is to break into the safes in the office of each shop and steal some cash. In fact throughout the whole game you're always finding cash though it's never said what this is actually used for, outside of affecting the end level score. 
a score which is about as meaningful as drinking food colouring, then marvelling at the fact that now your piss is a different shade of yellow. Yeah. Anyway. This is again the same city from the last level repeated. And just like before, you are consistently being attacked by droves of enemies, literally a dozen at once. I'm not an enforcer, I'm a one-man killing machine. How does organised crime still even exist in this city with the amount of people I'm killing here? During this level, you'll also get the hunting rifle, returning again unchanged from Nolf 2. And this thing seems pretty decent because at least it can kill enemies in a single hit. But the slow firing rate and reload time makes it about as useful as fart-flavoured air freshener. Can I also say again how disappointed I am how they butchered the branding automatic rifle in this game? Like Vito Corleone says in The Godfather, look at how they massacred my boy. Anyway, after clearing out the five shops, wiping out another few dozen mobsters, at this point it's amazing any of them are still left, finally Capone wants to meet us in person. So we head off to his suite at the Lexington Steel Hotel. As soon as we get there though, the power is cut, bombs go off, and the place is attacked by Johnny Torello and his men. First, we've got to restore power to the building, which is done by heading to the basement. Then we've got 10 minutes to find and defuse a bunch of bombs around the hotel. Thankfully, this isn't too hard though, because the ticking from the bombs is so loud, you'd probably have to be deaf to not hear it when you're close by. Once we reach Capone's suite though, we find he's been tied up by Torello, and we have to whack him in another boss fight. Torello then starts throwing Molotov cocktails so quickly and efficiently, you'd think it's some kind of Olympic event, but he's easy enough to kill. Then for the final mission in the game, we've got to escort Capone out of the hotel, which is yet again another level just lazily recycled. Like heating up two day old spaghetti bolognese in the microwave again because you can't be asked making a fresh batch. Though this level did have the benefit of making me laugh at this stupid prick doing somersaults down the staircase. But finally, we finished the game, and what do we get for our hard work? Well, how about just the logo for the game on a black background? Yeah, that's all you're getting. Bitch. Bitch. All up, Mob Enforcer or Chicago Enforcer, whatever I'm supposed to call it, it was pretty bad. I'd probably compare it to eating soggy cereal or having a catheter put in. It's a bare bones, lazy shooter that doesn't really add anything all that new or exciting to the genre. And it takes what's probably one of the weakest elements of the Jupiter engine, which is the shooting mechanics, and turns it into an entire game. On top of that, like I said earlier, it runs horribly. There's frame rate issues. The mouse input is as wonky as a shopping cart with three wheels. And to simply make the game playable on any level required more screwing around than a night spent in a cheap hotel with your mum. Schwacked. About the only good thing that came out of this game was that it let me try to work on my voice impressions. But aside from that, it was a complete waste of time. Leave the game, take the cannoli. This way.